What up y'all, it's your boy Home Team here. This is my first video ever. And what I want to do with this, this channel is create videos that talk about African history, culture, and worldview. And I notice um, when I talk to kids about African history, they don't know nothing. And what they do know is usually negative. So basically, what I want to try and do is just have you know, general discourse about African history and disseminate knowledge about, you know, the history, the culture, and the worldview, because, you know, throughout time, throughout the histories, our history, African history, has been distorted. So pretty much I want to just have a general discourse, spread knowledge. I want us to learn and grow. And that's what Home Team History is all about, because Home Team is the African diaspora. That's what it means. And people of African descent, you know, um, learning and growing and just, um, just communicating with each other and just taking back our history and um, putting the pieces back together. And that's what we're all about. What I want to talk about today is Queen Zinga. For those of you that don't know Queen Zinga, she was a queen in the 17th century of modern day Angola. If we take an objective look at her history, we sometimes get a contradictory picture. We have the Portuguese story and we have the African story. Now, and you have other stories in between, of course. But we take a look at her history and her story and her legend and her and her myths everything in between and we learn that you know she didn't really have any loyalties and a lot of people a lot of scholars was just like you know who is this woman so what I want to try and do is I want to I want to bring together those pieces and try and help you guys out a little bit from the knowledge that I know so anyway Queen Zinga was was born in 17th century uh, around the 17th century, 17th century and basically she um she was born with the umbilical cord like wrapped around her neck and basically in bundu society that meant that you know you're gonna be strong you were gonna be determined you know things of that nature so a woman came to her mom and told zinga's mom that you know zinga she's gonna be a queen someday and apparently her father took a liking to that her father was the angola or that's the name for you know the king the or the ruler was angola so he would take Zinga to battle with him and he would actually like let her witness, you know, his rule. And from that, you know, from that foundation, she got, you know, a real good understanding of how to to grow a kingdom and to organize people. And just from that beginning alone made her really special. She had two sisters and a brother. After her father died, you know, her brother took over. But it's interesting because in Bundu society, you just don't take over when <laughs> the king dies. Like, after the king dies, there's like a, a big discussion, a big debate. It's not necessarily violent, but it can get violent. And um, it's all about how many people are following you, how many people like you. So, if people are following you and people like you and you elite, then you can become king. But I guess with um, Zynga's brother, his father made you know, paved the way for him to, you know, get likes or to, you know, just get just some notoriety. So the people voted for him to be become the king. And so um, there was some controversy in um, with Queen Zinga because after her brother died, she automatically took the throne. And the Bundus were just like, "You, what are you doing? You can't you can't do this. But she's so intelligent. What Queen Zinga did was she realized that in order for you to be legitimate, other nations have to look at you and be like, oh, okay, I acknowledge you as king or queen of this area or of these people. So what she did was she went to the Portuguese and she was just like, yo, I think I'm going to become a Christian. And she got baptized. And so the Portuguese looked at that and it was just like, okay, well, maybe we got to take her serious now. <laughs> so basically she went to the Portuguese and she was just like, Yo, um, I'm the Gola now, and in order for you to talk to the Bundu, you got to go through me. And that's what she did, and the Portuguese was just like, okay. So she goes back to, you know, Bundu land, and the Bundus was just like, you're not the queen. You don't rule us. You're illegitimate. So they were really indifferent to her. And this is why, because in many African societies, there's a matrilineal system. And the matrilineal system pertains to, you know, the rulership. And the line of rulership in many African kingdoms and nations comes through the woman. So your royalty because of your mother, not from your father. So that was very interesting. So with Queen Zinga's brother, 
her brother's mother was the royalty. She was the queen. She was basically the main joint. Queen Singer's mother was basically the side chick. So the Bundu elite was just like, you not, you illegitimate. You can't come rule when your mom was just some concubine or some bed warmer. And so Zinga had a lot of problems with that, with the Bundu people and her legitimacy. But, you know, like I said, she was so intelligent. She was able to manipulate Portuguese politics and Bundu politics at the same time and kind of combine them and make it so that she came out on top. And that was so intelligent that people look at her story and, you know, they go like, yo, like this, this chick has no loyalty to anybody. But if you take a closer look at it, you realize she had a loyalty to herself and to her people. But at the end of the day, you know, the Portuguese union, I guess, came to nothing because like they were slave trading in the, in the area because basically the Portuguese came to Angola, first of all, because they were getting the business um, with uh, the English and the French in uh, West Africa or northern West Africa. So the Portuguese came down to Angola and it was just like, OK, we're going to settle here in slave trade. But Queen Zinga was just like, you know, when they would have runaway slaves, she would adopt them and welcome them with open arms. And the Portuguese was just like, what's going on? They didn't understand that, of course. And so a lot of people have a misconception about how the Europeans came into Africa and started, you know, slave trade and stuff like that. It's called the slave trade, not the I'm going to go into Africa with my gun. I'm going to get some Negroes. Uh, you take the left, you take the right. We're going to put the net over him. No, it didn't happen like that. It was kind of like, it was more so... They had to go, these, were, these European powers had to go into Africa, right? And they had to learn the culture. They had to learn the politics. They had to learn the leader. And they have to, had to manipulate all that, all those elements, and try and, you know, gain an advantage. And that's what many of them did. It was very rare for them to just go into a village and just raid and, and you know, pillage. Because that would take too much time, too much money, too much effort. And honestly, if they didn't align with any other African groups, they probably would have got the business. So here's the thing. Also, a lot of people think there was some, you know, pan-African union. But back in those days, you know, it was, you know, Ambundu and you Bengala. I'm going to tell you about the Bengala in a minute. But Ambundu and you Bengala. And you cross this line and I'm going to sell you to some Europeans. That's what it was about. There was no pan-African black power type stuff, you know. So... The Portuguese aligned with the Bengala. Now, the Bengala was some bad dudes, man. They were like the Spartans of that region. They were some bad dudes. I'll go in-depth a little later or in the next video. But the Bengala, look them up. They were some bad dudes. The Portuguese realized that, and they aligned with them quick. And so the Bundu had some beef with the Bengala, of course. So Queen Zinga, not being loyal to the Portuguese or the Bundu in particular because, you know, the, the political uh, duress she was under, she went to the Bengala and was just like, under their system in particular and the Bengala philosophy, the Bengala society, she was able to rule because they allowed women rulers. They were fully accepting of it. So she went to Bengala, but then after a while, the Bengala was just like, yo, you're not even, you're not even Bengala, like, you Bundu. So that didn't work out. She tried to have an alliance with the Dutch. You know, that eventually fell through. But the way Queen Zinga was able to manipulate so many different people and just just understand the politics and the culture and kind of, you know, work it to her, her advantage. Like, she, um, she was really involved in the slave trade. And she, um, she tried to free slaves. She tried to incorporate slaves into her armies, into her, you know, her kingdoms. She later went to the Matamba Kingdom because the Matamba Kingdom was weakened by the Bengala, of course. And so she went to the Matamba Kingdom and they accepted her for a while. Her whole life was a struggle for legitimacy. Her whole life, pretty much. And the time when she was um, in the Matamba Kingdom, she was involved with the Portuguese, the Dutch, the Bundu, the Bengala, the Matamba. She, you know, she was able to manipulate you know, those people to her advantage and to the advantage of pretty much African people, her people, the Bundu, to help them out. And she used she used the Portuguese when she can, she used the Dutch when she can. And sometimes, you know, in boxing you gotta take a punch to give a punch. And sometimes she would allow her own people to suffer 
so that later on in the future they can benefit. So the, the story of Zynga is, is very sophisticated and I encourage you guys to take a, a closer look at it because it's, it's really interesting. She was a queen, man, and she, she was a powerful, very, very powerful, intelligent woman. And a lot of people can look up to her because while she was there, the Portuguese could never really get a super stronghold over that area because they were, you know, conflicted because of her political intelligence and her military might. Even one Dutch general was just like, yo, this woman is brave and cunning. Like, she's an amazing woman. And a lot of European scholars used to praise Zynga because of her intelligence and her wit and her ability to, you know, work situations for her good. But, you know, it's sad because she always tried to, to gain that legitimacy because of, you know, her story and where she came from. But through that, she was able to, to overcome the odds and become great. And today, you know, she's Queen Zynga of Angola. And uh, they have a monument of her, of, of, you know, Queen Zynga in Angola today. And it's a beautiful story. And I encourage you guys to look at it, check it out, know thyself, and remember your ancestors. Peace. <laughs>